my melon project was the first project that I started being really intentional about what I was doing and about land race plant breeding because I live in a high elevation mountain ecosystem. It's super cold at night. The growing season is is super short. Melons are a warm loving crop and there wasn't any melons available at my local farmer's market because none of the neighbors could grow melons either. If I buy melons from the from the seed catalog and planted them, they didn't mature in time, but they almost matured. And, and so there was hope for the project. And so when I started the melon project for the first year, and when I say melon, I mean the cantaloupe type melons. So I gathered together seeds from about 30 seed companies, just whatever melon I could get my hands on that was an orange cantaloupe of some kind or other. Some of the seed came from a breeding project in Long Island, from the Long Island Seed Project. So I planted those seeds and, you know, just whatever I could get my hands on. And the first year, about 75% of the varieties failed completely. They didn't germinate. They germinated and got eight bite bugs. They germinated and just sit there stunted the whole growing season or whatever it was. But there were a few melons that produced a few green fruits that I harvested before they were damaged by frost and then let them mature in the house until I could save the seeds from them. They weren't worth eating that year, but they had at least reproduced. And the second generation, the same sort of thing I searched the internet and my seed swaps and got as many new varieties as I could get. I replanted the seeds that I had produced the previous year. And the second year, there were two plants that were more productive than all of the rest of the plants in the garden. That was two plants that were more productive than 200 plants. You know, they were just, they just thrived and they produced like a basket of fruit each. I could see the difference in, in the growth of those plants early in the season. And so those two plants matured seeds in plenty of time before the frost. So then the third year I replanted those seeds. The third year I was harvesting baskets and baskets and baskets of, of cantaloupes early in the season, beautiful glorious cantaloupes. And, and, and so now I could I could reliably grow cantaloupes. I shared some of the seeds about this time with my friend Peggy, and she came back in the fall j- just joyful because she says, I'm able to grow the first musk melon I ever grew in my whole life. Because she she's, lives in a river valley that's a little bit colder even than than my farm. So what a joyful thing for her to be able to grow musk melons. And, and so then after the third year, like the fourth and the fifth and the sixth, and the, until now, I've been able to select for flavor. And so I'm getting these beautiful, glorious flavors. They're just so joyful to me because they're exactly what my body wants. I want my musk melons to be soft and smelly and sweet. One thing that happened with my musk melons is I selected for musk melons that were about three to five pounds because they were early and really just beautiful musk melons. And then one year I got musk melons that were 12 pound musk melons. And, and that was just from one of those 20 pound melons that I planted way back at the beginning had thrown a little bit of pollen into the patch. And it just took all those maybe five years before things finally came together for that to produce a large fruit again. So even though it didn't appear at first that the the genetics of that plant had gotten into my patch, they had gotten into my patch and it just took a, a while to manifest.